The Asus ROG Flow Z13 is a unique form factor that really does blur the lines between an ultra portable laptop and a gaming tablet if you prefer. But don't let that tablet name put you off because this device really does support some serious horsepower. With a 14 core Intel Core i9-12900H processor under the hood alongside 16 gigs of high speed LPDDR5 memory and an RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU, the power is clearly evident. Oh, and if you want some proper gaming muscle, capability for the Asus ROG XG Mobile RTX 3080 laptop external GPU solution is present. There are some pretty cool design features and performance options on show in this £1,900 device, so let's take a closer look. If we start off with the design of the Asus ROG Flow Z13, the overall form factor is actually more resemblant of a tablet such as the Microsoft Surface Pro. Asus actually refers to this as a gaming tablet rather than a laptop. I'd say that it certainly blurs the lines between the two. You get a roughly 1.1 kilogram, 12 millimeter thin chassis that houses the hardware and features a 170 degree integrated kickstand. Cooling positions on the top and back allow for venting of the vapor chamber cooling system that is deployed alongside liquid metal tim. The tablet feels good in one's hand but can function as a competent laptop type device with the kickstand and magnetic detachable backlit keyboard and trackpad solution. That detachable peripheral device also doubles up as a useful screen cover. Plus it features the actually good keys alongside a reasonable but small trackpad. The overall construction is high quality, the unit feels solid and it doesn't get attacked by fingerprints too badly though the slightly softer textured keyboard peripheral device does get a little bit grubby with dust, so do watch out for that. Primary to the under the hood hardware is the new Core i9-12900H Alder Lake processor. This chip features 6 performance cores and 8 efficient cores for 20 threads total, and it can turbo as high as 5GHz with the 35W to 115W rated power range. Memory comes in the form of 16 gigs of 5200MHz LPDDR5. It's actually a little bit disappointing to see 16 gigs rather than 32 gigs for a price point of this device. And our unit ships with a one terabyte PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD. For built-in graphics, we get the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti laptop DGPU alongside the MUX switch that integrates between the Alder Lake iGPU and of course that NVIDIA dedicated GPU. The NVIDIA GPU is set to run at about 35 to 40 watts power mode. If an RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU is a little bit underpowered for you, then Asus does have you covered, thankfully. Like we saw from the ROG Flow X13 back in early 2021, Asus deploys the ROG XG Mobile external GPU connector here. This is essentially a PCIe x 8 link alongside a USB-C connector, and Asus uses this as an alternative to Thunderbolt, and it's sometimes limited by 4 lane bandwidth. We have the 16 gigabyte RTX 3080 laptop version of the eGPU for testing. This unit sports a 280 watt power supply that also feeds power to the laptop when connected. And another benefit is the addition of connection ports such as gigabit Ethernet, 5 gigabits per second USB Type-A, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4 and an SD card reader. And if we now go back to focusing on the ROG Flow Z13 itself, the 13.4 inch IPS level display is a 16 by 10 form factor with touch capability and adaptive sync supported. We got the 1920 by 1200, 120 hertz, 100% sRGB option, which I think is a smart solution for this type of device. You get a rear eight megapixel camera that is good for tablet type duties, and you also get a 720p webcam, but it doesn't support Windows Hello. Thankfully, you do get a fingerprint sensor built into the power button, so you can have some smart log on. And in terms of connectivity, we see a single Thunderbolt 4 port that can do 100 watts charging. You get a micro SD card reader, a 3.5mm combo audio jack, a 10 gigabits per second USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port that also supports power delivery and display port and doubles up for the ROG XG mobile interface. Oh, and that single USB Type-A port is actually USB 2.0 spec. 2.0 on a 2022 device. I am furious with Asus for that one. Utterly ridiculous. 
And then rounding out the connectivity, you get Wi-Fi 6E in 2x2 form and of course Bluetooth 5.2. Charge of the 56 watt hour battery is done by the 100 watt capable USB-C adapter. Really glad to see USB-C charging used properly on this device. Pricing for the ROG Flow Z13 in its Core i9-12900H and RTX 3050 Ti laptop DGPU form is about £1,900 in the UK. And if you want the ROG XG Mobile RTX 3080 version, then that's going to increase the price up to about three grand. This is around £700 more expensive than the Asus ROG Flow X13 AMD version that is perhaps the most logical competitor because the Surface Pro uses significantly lesser hardware. 700 quid extra versus the AMD version, that is a hefty price difference. So Asus is going to have to pull one out of the bag here. Let's get into testing. As always, we test in an out-of-the-box state using minimal adjustments to the laptop itself other than of course installing Windows updates and our test software. And for Asus, as we always seem to be saying, we uninstall McAfee. Stop installing it, it's junk. Please just charge me a dollar extra, get rid of McAfee. For the power option, we tend to go for the performance type default mode for the Asus laptops. And then we try and stick with the performance mode for any competitor brand laptops too. So not the crazy turbo mode. It is tricky to pit the Flow Z13 against any logical competitors because it's such a unique device. As such, we're going to compare it to some of the comparison data that we've grabbed recently, particularly with our review of the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. So that means we've got a few different data points, notably that Zephyrus G14 with a Ryzen 9 6900HS processor and an RX 6800S graphics card. And then we've also got comparison from a couple of 13-inch laptops, notably a Tiger Lake-powered Razer system and then also a Ryzen 7 5800U powered Asus system. As always, if you want more details on the comparison laptops that we're using, the test data, some of the test settings that we're running, then check out our previous laptop video reviews, notably the Zephyrus G14 that we did recently, and then also check out the Kikuru written web page because you should have more details over there. Let's jump into the numbers. Looking at the chart for temperatures, power and clocks gives us a good overview of how the Core i9-12900H CPU operates in the ROG Flow Z13 under the default performance power mode. We see the processor quickly spike up in power and temperature and clocks, but it very soon settles down to its sensible long-term level. This looks to be around 35 watts package power draw, which corresponds to a little over 2 GHz average frequency for the 14 cores. Asus does well to squeeze 35 watts long duration CPU capability into this form factor, but 2.4 GHz on the P cores and 1.8 GHz on the E cores is a notable drop from the headline frequency. So we will have to see how this performance holds out. And quickly noting the performance metrics when running the ROG XG Mobile RTX 3080 eGPU, this is a little less important than the laptop itself as the external dock unit has its own power delivery and cooling to manage its performance. Back-to-back -back runs of F1 2020 at 1080p had the RTX 3080 laptop GPU like in a power draw of around 120 watts peak. This allowed the CPU to operate relatively freely at around 40 watts, thanks to bouncing up and down as the gaming load changed. Wall power draw for the entire solution was around 190 watts total. Let's listen to the noise output. That seems perfectly reasonable in my opinion, especially for the horsepower squeezed into this compact form factor. Though there's definitely notable output from the XG Mobile eGPU when running a gaming load, so I guess that's the solution for gaming with headphones or perhaps a few feet away from a big TV. As usual, Asus seems to have a passion for cheaping out and providing entry-level SSDs, even in its expensive high-end systems, which is highly disappointing. There's little to indicate that the Micron 2450 SSD actually benefits from its PCIe Gen 4x4 connection in terms of speed. Battery life is very much mediocre at around 6 hours in PC Mark 10. That's down to the 56 watt hour battery that appears relatively small when coupled with an Intel H-series CPU. Ample USB-C charging is great, but don't expect all-day battery life from the ROG Flow Z13. Intel's new architecture and core count design for the Alder Lake laptop chips results in strong multi-threaded performance numbers. While AMD's new Ryzen 9 6900HS inside a physically larger laptop may be quicker in our testing, particularly in long-duration benchmarks, 
That's due to the AMD chip running at 45 watts real world versus the Core i9-12900H in the flow being at 35 watt real world in our testing. Performance from Intel's chip is good, particularly when factoring in the slim design of this gaming tablet slash laptop. Handbrake shows a similar picture. AMD's new HS series chips may be faster when inside a 14 inch style laptop, but when viewed through the prism of this thin sub 1.2 kilo device, Asus and Intel deliver very solid performance indeed. 7-zip is an area where Intel has clearly closed a lot of ground. AMD still wins handsomely in decompressing, but Intel does very well in compressing. That's aided by the high-speed LPDDR5 memory. Running at 5200 MHz, even a modest 16GB solution delivers some mega bandwidth numbers. And we don't see any write speed quirkiness from the Intel-based Flow Z13, like we see from Asus's AMD laptop. Latency though, that's the clear downside of LPDDR5 memory. With the ability to boost up to lofty frequencies on its new Alder Lake architecture, the Core i9-12900H equipped Flow Z13 tops our Cinebench 1T chart by a very sizable margin. That speaks volumes about the lightly threaded performance potential that is important for this tablet style device. But with the focus back on multi-threaded operations, there is clear and measurable slowdown due to cooling and power limitations after extensive Cinebench NT runs. 3 d Mark Time Spy has the Z13 neck and neck with the G14 in its CPU score. Firestrike also shows that the Core i9-12900H has strong gaming potential despite its power limited deployment. And the CPU Focus 3 d Mark test actually shows the ROG Flow Z13 flexing its muscle for processor capability. Unsurprisingly, the acceleration abilities of the Intel and NVIDIA combination do well for Asus's gaming tablet in PC Mark 10. A high-powered RTX 3080 laptop GPU via the XG Mobile docking solution allows the ROG Flow Z13 to comfortably sit at the top of many 1080p gaming charts. This comes as no surprise versus the logical comparison points that we have, but it is good to see that Intel's Core i9-12900H is able to keep pace with the speedy NVIDIA GPU that also has a healthy power budget. We do see slight signs of weakness whereby the Ryzen 6000 competitor overtakes the Z13 and F1 2020 with its high frame rates, but realistically, the Core i9-12900H and RTX 3080 laptop eGPU present as a strong combination for the ROG Flow Z13 at 1080p. And looking at some 1440p gaming via an external monitor on each solution, the ROG Flow Z13 really cements its leadership position with the resolution cranked up. The Asus ROG Strix G17 with a 115 watt RTX 3070 laptop GPU gets close, but the slightly higher power allocation and better underlying hardware of the RTX 3080 eGPU take the victory for Asus's ROG Flow Z13. This is a good 1440p gaming laptop with that ROG XG Mobile. You have to give Asus credit for deploying such a unique and well-designed device, I don't want to call it a laptop, device to the market. The most logical competitor is the Microsoft Surface Pro laptop or whatever you want to call that. But realistically, Asus is using a completely different tier of hardware here. It's significantly more powerful than the hardware that Microsoft uses. So yeah, it's pretty impressive that you get the better hardware squeezed into this form factor. And even if that's not enough, you also get the external GPU solution that you can run pretty sufficiently without having to worry about any Thunderbolt limitations. The Core i9-12900H is a fast chip that does well even in its 35 watt power restricted form. Yes, there's clearly more performance available that cannot really be accessed with this chassis and cooling setup, but it is good to see Intel finally offering chips that can competently scale down their power whilst maintaining good performance. The ROG XG Mobile eGPU solution performs well and serves its task of opening up higher graphics capabilities to this slim and light device. Our previous testing with the ROG Flow X13 has shown that Asus's eight lane approach for external connectivity is good, particularly when looping back to the laptop display, but I can't help but feel that Thunderbolt in itself is still a more all encompassing interface and ecosystem for external device connectivity. And that's particularly true when you realize that external Thunderbolt graphics docks will typically take a full fat, high powered desktop GPU. I guess to be fair to Asus, it is good that you've got both options. Thermals, noise, build quality, Asus does really well on all of these fronts. And I have no complaints about the peripherals either, particularly that 16 by 10 high refresh rate display, which is very good to my eyes. There are some clear downsides though, 
16 gigs of RAM is hardly inspiring and realistically it's going to cut off probably a pretty decent proportion of people who would actually use this for a productivity type system. Asus continues to insist on using a mediocre performance SSD inside even an expensive laptop like this which is just annoying. The battery life is not very good and will realistically struggle with even just a normal working day of general usage. And perhaps most annoyingly, because it's such a petty issue, is that the single USB Type-A port is USB 2.0 spec. Honestly, I cannot explain how furious I am with this. Absolutely ridiculous to have this on a high performance, high price 2022 device. Ludicrous. With all of that said, we will definitely give Asus credit for innovating with the RG Flow Z13. But those innovations do certainly come at a serious cost and they really do present some pricing issues in my opinion. And that's because the AMD based ROG Flow X13, which is comparable in many respects, is actually about £700 cheaper. So realistically what you're saying there is that you're happy to pay a £700 premium for the convenience of a truly tablet-like design versus that Flow X13, which isn't really a tablet with a detachable keyboard. Kudos to Asus. Powerful device, hits a probably niche target market, but I'm sure someone's going to say they'll absolutely love this and it's just what they're looking for. But yeah, there are some downsides. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching this video review of the Asus ROG Flow Z13 alongside the ROG XG Mobile external GPU solution. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Is this type of high performance gaming tablet a device that you would truly be interested in with a detachable keyboard? Would you go for the XG Mobile in a pretty compact form factor in all fairness, or would you just rather go for a normal desktop type Thunderbolt external GPU? As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe, hit the bell icon on the YouTube channel, really supports us. Check out the main written article on the Kikuru website, that really supports us well. You can check out our Patreon page if you want to support us that way. Keep in touch on Discord and Twitter and the likes, and we will see you in the next one.